What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, but this Natlin trailer was so good, I couldn't resist from making a video. So today in this video, we will be going through each new character and their possible lore connections based on their names and their character designs. So without further ado, let's start off with this little Geo girl whose name is Kachina. So Kachina actually refers to spiritual beings or spirits in Native American culture, particularly towards the southwestern part of the United States. Kachinas are said to personify anything and everything in the world, like the sun, the stars, the cosmos, or even their very own ancestors. The Kachina dolls are still displayed in many museums, but they bear very little resemblance to our little character here. So I guess it is possible that there may not be much lore significance to the name yet. The next character is our Pokemon trainer looking Hydro girl, Moalani. Moalani is actually the name of a high chiefess from Hawaii who lived in the island of Oahu. Moalani is also said to be the descendant of a wizard who worshipped an octopus god, Kanaloa. Since Genshin's Moalani looks Hydro, the inspiration is quite clear. The only question is could she be someone of high ranking like a chiefess, maybe of one of the six tribes of Natlan. Next is the cool looking dendro boy, Kinich. Now here's the most interesting fact. Kinich is probably named after Kinich Ahau, who was the Mayan sun god. The term Kinich actually means sun-eyed and was also used as a royal title back in those days. Now if we take a look at Genshin's character, it does somewhat look like Kinich's eyes resemble that of a sun. And maybe Kinich could be possibly of Natalin royalty but prefers to just swing around on trees like Tarzan. Now next to Kinich we can see this pixelated dragon thingy who shouts out son of a nice lady. And this character is called Kuhul Ahau, a self-proclaimed almighty dragon lord. Now this name is actually written as Ahau which we saw in the Mayan sun god Kinich Ahau after which Kinich is probably named. Despite being the most peculiar character that we have ever seen, it could be possible that Kuhul Ahau is somewhat related to Kinich or his power. This could be further justified by the fact that Kinich and Ahau when read together reads Kinich Ahau, which is the Mayan sun god we mentioned earlier. Coming on to the next character, it is Sitlali who is seen to have a cryo vision. Now this name is actually of Native American or Aztec culture and it means star. I honestly don't know what to make of this, except that her design actually looks cute. Now for quite some time, players have been asking how it was to buff Dihia. So here we go. Geo Dihia. Xylonen. Her vision is in a very interesting place. Xylonen is said to be the alternative name of the Aztec goddess of agriculture, Shikomekotl. Xylonen is also said to be married to Tezcatlipoca, the central deity in Aztec culture, whose animal counterpart is a jaguar. And the Xylonen in Genshin's design is clearly inspired from a jaguar as well. Now we have a familiar face reappearing and that is Ian Sun the preview character for Natlin. While her element still is unconfirmed and is probably Geo or Pyro, Ian-san is inspired from a deity in Yoruba mythology called Oya Ian-san An. Oya is said to be a warrior goddess who governs fire, storms, lightning, as well as rebirth. So it is probably Pyro. The only question that remains is, does she have anything to do with our dear Benny boy? The next character is yet another cryo character, Chaska. The name Chaska was seen in a Salvadorian folklore about a fictional character Chaska who drowned herself to be reunited with her lover who was murdered by her father. Yeah, I don't think there's any lore connection here, although she does give me quite some vampire hunter vibes. Now coming up is the next character whom we only get a glimpse of and that character is Ororon. Ororon is probably named after Oloron the supreme deity and the creator of heavens in Yoruba mythology. While this doesn't tell us much, we can only assume that Ororon is a very important character in Natlan's storyline, also given by the fact that he appears right next to Capitano. And last but not the least, the moment we have all been waiting for, the Pyro Archon herself, Mawika. In all honesty, Himeko Murata in a badass motorcycle leather spandex was the last thing I imagined the Pyro Archon to look like. But nevertheless, she looks absolutely cool. Now her name Mawika is probably a reference to Mahuika, the Maori fire deity of New Zealand tribes. 
We can also see that her design heavily depicts imagery of the sun, more accurately the Aztec sun symbol. Apart from all that, her hair resembles that of a phoenix, and in the trailer we can see that she even takes the form of one. This foreshadows Natlin's preview title which is an ode to resurrection, and we know that phoenixes are mystical creatures capable of resurrecting themselves. As we all know, every Archon's real name is based on a demon from the Book of Ars Gothia. So it is highly possible that Mawika, the Pyro Archon, is based off of Phoenix, an Ars Gothia demon who controls fire and is literally a Phoenix. Much like we had speculated, there is indeed a war going on in Natlin, except that it looks like a tournament and a ball game. Clearly, Capitano isn't interested in playing fetch, but this is not the ring of war we thought the strongest human on Tevet would be participating in. All this tells us is that there is definitely a lot of dark stuff Hoyovers is hiding while showing us colorful Pokemons and their trainers. But as always, in order for us to know what that is, I guess we'll have to wait. Now before we wind up, I find it interesting why they didn't reveal one of the most important characters, that is Jabalanke. Could it be possible that Jabalanke couldn't be revealed yet? Is it because Jabalanke is maybe a Saurian? Or a dragon? <gasps> or maybe Jabalanke is the real Pyro Archon? Anyways, that's it guys. Thank you for watching the video and I will see you next time. Bye bye.